Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Online. If you enjoy this video, please become a hostage negotiator, but rather than negotiating the hostage's release, use your megaphone to tell the large group of civilians who gathered around to subscribe to me, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Ah, Red Dead Redemption Online. It's like GTA Online, but instead of being killed by everyone you come across, you only get killed by about 25% of the people you come across. Wholesome. Anyway, I just enjoyed a big glass of what I thought was flavoured water, but turned out to be concentrated scented bleach, so let's get on with it before my stomach dissolves. Also, how cute is my dog? I have no follow up for this, I just really like my dog. So yeah, today Maddie and I want to max upgrade the moonshine business so we can make some real cash. On our way there, I accidentally trample this guy called Ghost8584. He's pretty chill about it and seems to be having a death match with this other dodgy malacca. Wow, that's a bit sadistic there champ, but yeah. Eventually Blondie gets one up on him and then in an unexpected turn of events, points the revolver at me and pulls the trigger. I have a little rule where I do my best not to shoot first. But if you kill me, well have you ever seen one of Riley Reed's educational videos? In this scenario, I'm all eight of the black guys. After I'm done killing this kid, I'm going to find out where he lives and then go to his house and ask his mother out on a date. We're going to have a really beautiful evening together at a tasteful restaurant and then after about six months, I'll ask her to marry me. Now as his stepdad, I'll bond with this kid until one day, in an incredibly touching and emotional moment, he refers to me as his father. Then I'm going to leave and never come back. Lol cop that, you didn't think it would happen twice in your life, did you, you little scrub? Anyway, as usual, I've become distracted from the task at hand. Let's moon some shine. So basically, my manager Maggie has quite an aggressive business strategy where we just kill all of our competition, any police officer who tries to interfere, and often many helpless civilians. We've organised a meeting with our two biggest competitors and are setting up a little trap where we plan to burn them alive. Really struggling to see how we're the good guys here, but anyway, yeah. We proceed to burn them all alive, but also ourselves. In the panic and confusion, I quickly ask Maddie if she could please send me a photo of her feet and she respectfully declines. Wow, I send her a photo of my feet every day for three months and she won't even send one in return. This conclusively proves that the wage gap is a myth. I take down old mate and then capture the other big bopper alive, which might be the most humane thing we've ever done. And can I get a holy heck yeah in the chat? And to actually get the max upgrades, I need to be level 10 though, so we've got to do a few more missions. And this reminds me of my time in Nam. Of course, I was in Vietnam in 2017 on vacation 42 years after the war had finished. Yeah, so the tour group I was with really didn't like me because of, you know, the multiple public stabbings. Both needing ammo, we ride over to Rhodes to stock up. We come across another player who seems chill and friendly, and it's these moments that remind you just how wholesome the community really is. Just kidding, I get shot by a guy called Agent Rockstar25. He tries to hit and run, but I think he underestimates just how far out of my way I'm willing to go to get revenge. The big girl thinks he can kill me and then just go and do a mission like nothing happened. Not today, puppy. I used to work at this restaurant when I was studying and the manager hated me for no good reason. He used to always make me clean the bathrooms repetitively and docked my pay and I never knew why. One day he calls me and asks me to cover a shift, but I'm like, yo, I'm pretty high. I don't think I can work. He says it's fine and to come in anyway, so I do, and then he fires me for coming to work high. Absolutely debated, it was a trick. Within two days, I got a job at a new cafe about 10 metres away from the old place, just across a paved walkway. I was the barista, and from the coffee machine I could see right into his entire restaurant. It was a big venue with like 300 seats, so I used to wait for him to be far away from the restaurant's phone and then call, but hang up before he could ever get there. This dodgy malacca would be walking back and forth all day, swearing his little head off. He'd wait by the phone for 10 minutes and then the second he walked away, bam, I'd call again. 
When I had my breaks, I used to sit outside just munching my breakfast burrito, smiling at him. One day our eyes locked and he had this moment of realization that it had been me calling this entire time. He rushed straight over to the cafe right past me and said to my new manager, do you know I fired him for coming to work high? She replied and said, yeah, who do you think he bought the weed from? GG, too easy. Anyway, as you can see, Maddie and I are busy doing moonshine missions. This is one of the rare, less violent scenarios where we are simply knocking them unconscious rather than, you know, burning anyone to death. I perhaps get a little too enthusiastic and start beating up a civilian. I don't know how, but there is always excessive collateral damage. Maddie proceeds to beat up a female civilian which is good because equality is important. No demographic will go unbeaten. I'm almost level 10, but there are no available missions, so I decide to brew up a batch of shine to sell. Old mate is intoxicated on shift again, I should really fire him. 30 minutes to produce, and this time I'm going to flavor the moonshine so I don't lose money like last video. Progress. This is the perfect time to fulfill my dream of stealing one of the motorboats from the docks. Some people want to be the prime minister, some people want to cure cancer. I want to steal a boat in a video game, and debatably that takes more courage than anything. I also want to say thank you for the support on the channel. It's always been really insane, but recently it's gone to a whole new level. We had 6,000 new subscribers in one day last week. Every now and then I step back and assess what I'm doing. Like right now, narrating driving boats while sounding like the illegitimate love child of Australian Google Translate and David Attenborough. It's the definition of questionable content. Seriously though, thank you legends. Anyway, Maddie has to go in a hurry, but she's still in the game, so I just decide that she's coming with me anyway. This happy little adventure suddenly got kind of a seedy vibe as she's now just lying there tied up on my boat. I'm not going to let a little unintentional BDSM ruin the fun though, as I want to get this rig up a river. I just made myself a cup of tea, and I swear to god the steam from this boat looks better than the steam from my actual kettle in the kitchen. Maddie then times out, as it's been 15 minutes. Wow, I'm going to be honest, now that I'm driving this boat by myself up the river, it seems kind of depressing. Also, that posture can't be good for his back. Then my prayers are answered, and old mate Stealtho Robbo tells me he wants to meet up. He says he's just upstream. It's taken me a good 30 minutes to get this boat here, but then someone throws a molotov at my baby as they're riding past. It's really not looking good, chief. Being burnt alive is one of those things that is enjoyable to do to people, but not great when it's being done to you. Then in one of the most inspirational gaming moments of 2020, despite being burnt and shot at, the boat still works. This is a great metaphor. No matter how many times someone tries to burn you with a molotov, you will always be able to go upstream like a salmon. I should copyright that, it might be the most intelligent thing anyone's ever said. Anyway, Robbo climbs aboard, and he's a female in this game, as well as in Grand Theft Auto. I'm starting to think he's an online predator, and then he gets shot in the head. Moments later, I beach the boat, but the stream was getting shallow, so it was bound to happen at some point. Wow, what a fun, wacky boat adventure. Let's go sell some moonshine. We stop by Saint Denis for supplies, and come across one of our mates, which is a pretty big coincidence. He then proceeds to gun Robbo down for no reason and rides off into the night. We need new friends and Robbo needs to stop getting shot in the head. He then drowns some guy who stole his horse. We destroy another rival's moonshine still and then come across a player by the name of Happy Killer 452 He's actually a really supportive subscriber of ours and a real legend, so naturally we attack him and try to destroy his wagons. You see, every country has its own traditions. In Indonesia, the people who live on the island of Bali spend New Year's Day in complete silence meditating. In Australia, we are polite to those we don't know, and are simply horrible motherfuckers to those we love the most. It's a pretty beautiful tradition. Alright, at long last, it's time to sell a little shine. I'll be selling to Ginny Bates, and unfortunately I've made a few enemies today, so this could be dicey. I don't know why I so aggressively whip these horses, it's pretty unnecessary. Like women's rights. Wow, I'm kidding, and to my 7.5% female demographic, I'll roast the men back so it's even. 
Men are bad at giving birth to babies. Okay, I'm almost at Big Girl Ginny's house, but a roadblock is in the way, with many government agents standing guard. The game suggests I pull up and let them check the cargo, which was hugely questionable advice. I don't know what I was expecting, but there's clearly just a lot of moonshine back there. I make it to Ginny's house and pocket a cool $82.50. Lillian Whiting once said to be rich in friends is to be poor in nothing. But screw that, we're rich in actual money. You can't pay a homeless person 10 friends for a cheeky wristy, you know what I'm saying. I kill a few more revenue agents and finally we are a rank 10 moonshiner. What a feeling. I head back to my moonshine shack to unlock the last upgrade, but to my utter disappointment you have to buy the medium upgrade first. It costs $825. The lesson here is that being a moonshiner is the hardest job in the world. I'd rather be the chief operational engineer at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant than a Red Dead Online moonshiner. In the words of Jane Austen, Ain't no such thing as tricks and hoes, just unlock the last upgrade for your business next time, Jeff. I hope you legends are doing well, thanks for watching, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel through Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.